What is up, effing true followers, wrestling fans, and members of the YWC? I'm JC Styles here with the Effing Brand of Wrestling and Entertainment here on YouTube.com with the Monday Night Raw review for November 26, 2012. We start off the show tonight with a match, and they've been doing this a lot lately. They've been really pushing the starting of the show with an actual match. You know, me and Brian always poke fun at pro wrestle, uh, a wrestling show starting off with an actual wrestling match. You know, and it's something that they haven't been doing a lot of over the last several years, but it's cool that they, you know, getting back into the gist of starting the show with the match. We see Ryback take on Titus O'Neil. Now, coming off his match with CM Punk, both matches with CM Punk at Hell in a Cell and at Survivor Series, you know, I would think that Ryback would, you know, deserve, you know, more competition. Even though, not to take anything away from Titus O'Neil, I just think that Ryback has gotten to that point where he he can hang with the big dogs and he should be facing guys like the Big Shows and the Sheamuses and the Ortons and, you know, main event caliber guys. But we see T Ryback pick up the win over Titus O'Neil. Then he gets on the mic and he starts talking about either CM Punk or Ambrose, Reigns, and Rollins. Or all of them. He wants them. Feed him more. He says he's not leaving the ring until he gets what he wants. We come. We go to commercial. We come back. He's still in the ring. Se Vicky sends security out. He throws one of the security over the top rope. Then Vicky comes out. And he basically, you know, basically put Vicky right in his her spot and says, look, you're going to listen. I want Punk and I want him now. And she goes, well, I can't give you that, but I'll give you to I'll give him to you at TLC by, via by the board of directors because of the situation that happened with Greg Maddox at Hell in the Cell. He then she goes on to announce that Kane uh, later in the night, Kane or Daniel Bryan, the winner of the poll, the active poll would go on to face Punk in the main event tonight. Nine championship match, of course. Um, we then go into the second match of the night, Alberto Del Rio versus the great Kali. Now, this was set up actually earlier in the day. Uh, there was a backstage segment with Rosa Mendez and Hornswoggle with the incident that happened last week where Hornswoggle squirted her with the flower, and he goes... You, and basically started running her down a little bit. Then Albert, then uh, Alberto Del Rio came into the picture and started getting ready to say something and go to make move towards Hornswoggle, and the Great Kali showed up. And that's what led into this match tonight. We see Alberto Del Rio defeat the Great Kali. We then see an interview with Ambrose, Rollins, and Reigns, which was supposed to take place about the 9 o'clock mark, but this actually went on about 8.30. And it was really shocking because, you know, it was, you know, it wasn't really a unique interview it was just so much more of a you know basically them explaining themselves um michael cole basically asked out the, the the major question are they working for cm punk ambrose men said no and then he moved on to rollins and then rollins basically gave a really good explanation he goes you know we've been with the company for a while now but it's you know an injustice that they're being held back and there's a popularity and that how the general managers of Raw and SmackDown have to uh, answer to the board of directors and that the board of the directors have to answer to the WWE Universe and that it's an injustice. They go on to call themselves The Shield and then Reigns, you know, basically he goes, uh, Michael Cole goes to ask Reigns something. He goes, if I have something to say, I'll say it. And then he doesn't say anything and then they go on and they talk about The Shield of Injustice and how it was unjust that Punk had to defend his championship against two guys at Survivor Series. And then it was an injustice that his celebration would have been interrupted by Ryback. And then they just go on. And then Reigns stands up and says, this promo, this interview is over. And then they take the mics off and they walk off. Then we go into a Divas match. Tamina picking up the win over Alicia Fox. In my opinion, I like seeing the Divas, but I don't like seeing the Divas in a really, uh, in a really bad you know, filler match. You know what I'm saying? I mean, don't take don't take me wrong. I tip my hat off to the Divas because they can do a lot more than I can do in the ring. But I also think that the WWE has ruined Tamina's character by putting her in this big, bright singlet. 
Uh, she was fantastic several months back when she was coming out to the Jungle Music and she was coming out to, you know, like her father was coming out with the, the leopard print and everything like that. They need to get her back to that. I can understand that she's playing a heel now, but I would like to see her more as a, you know, more like her father will still hold the heel character because this new look that they have her doing isn't put working for her. And then also... She need they need to you know maybe uh, I know that women wrestlers don't have um, the trajectory and everything like that to come off the top rope but she should work on the splash some more because she was delivering the splash like her father was months ago and it seems like she's kind of you know fall lost to step but other than that you know I hope to see Tamina you know do really big things in the company. We then see Cena come out and he talks about being in the company for ten years. Uh, he talks about. Um, Ziggler getting what's coming to him, and then Vicky Guerrero comes out, and they start going back and forth about the AJ scandal, and then AJ comes out, and she goes, well, I, I was fired for, you know, being having a relations with John Cena, and then she goes, now that I'm not a boss, I can do whatever I want and date whoever I want, and she goes, she walks over to John Cena, and she starts, you know, caressing his head, and then slapping him on the ass, and everything, it was a very comic skit, but I'm kind of getting tired of seeing this, and I know I'm not the only one out there, um, this whole segment and skit was pretty much building up to seeing, uh, getting Ziggler versus Cena later in the night, we then uh, go into Kofi Kingston picking up the win over Lord Tensai. Now, they need to do something with Tensai because he was dominant for the first three months he was there. For the first two months he was there, I'm sorry. And then he just got completely buried like he did all those years ago back with the WWE. I mean, at least if he dropped the act and came back as Albert, at least he could be credible because... As the Tensai character, he's not delivering like I WWE thought he was going to, especially with the crowd chanting, uh, you know, Albert, Albert, Albert. So we then go backstage and we see a little backstage uh, segment where we see who wins the votes. Kane winds up picking up the votes, but then Daniel Bryan goes, no, who, what am I going to do tonight? And then they wind up putting him in a match against Rey Mysterio. Now, this match was fantastic. There was a lot of back and forth action. I'm a big fan of Daniel Bryan. I'm also a big fan of Rey Mysterio. You know, I, if everyone knows me, I'm a big X Division guy, so it was really good to see these two in the ring, and it was just phenomenal. But Rey Mysterio picks up the win in just fashion like he does. And we move into match number six of the night. We see John Cena pick up the win, of course, over Dolph Ziggler in a great match. I'm hoping that they do something with Dolph Ziggler at TLC where he cashes in. Um, and I find it funny because last year at TLC... Big Show was in a chairs match, and he won the World Heavyweight title, and then Daniel Bryan cashed in on him. Now he's defending the World Heavyweight Championship in the chairs match, and if he loses, if he wins against Sheamus, is there going to be some kind of retaliation, and then we see Dolph Ziggler cash in? Who knows, but that's just my opinion. I think it's kind of ironic, if you ask me. We then move into a fantastic match, the United States Champion, Antonio Sorosaro versus Sheamus. Now, this match was great. Both guys have really have a lot going in their career. Antonio Cesaro is the reigning United States champion. And just doing a phenomenal job with it. And I really hope to see a lot of big things from Cesaro because I know he's got a lot of... Uh, uh, history in his background, and he's been doing a lot of uh, old-style maneuvers, especially the what they call the Gotch-style neutralizer. Now they just call it the neutralizer, and I find it really cool that they bought. That he's going back to you know the old-school wrestling days of you know certain uh, athletes. But we see Sheamus pick up the win via countout uh, as the you know as the ref is counting Cesaro out, Big Show's music hits, and Sheamus takes his eyes off Cesaro and looks up at the stage. And he gets on the mic after he wins by count out and says, "You know, you, you called me a barbarian last week. I'm so barbaric. Because why don't you bring that steel chair down with you, and I can show you how barbaric I can get." And then Shame, and then Big Show just completely destroys the chair with his bare hands. And then we end that segment. We then see Sandow defeat Zack Ryder. I'm not going to dwell too much. Uh, I'm not the biggest Sandow supporter. I think he needs to drop that whole elbow of disdain. You know, I just think it looks really weird uh, when he does that whole thing. I think it's like almost like he's uh, signaling and channeling in his, uh, his uh, Larry Zabisco when he goes like this, you know. Uh, we then go into CM Punk picking up the win over Kane. 
Now, this was a great match, too. A lot of back and forth. Uh, towards the end of the match, we see Rollins, Reigns, and Ambrose come down to the ringside through the crowd. Uh, we, then we see, uh, after the match, they go to jump. They get in the ring and they jump Kane. Then after jumping on Kane for a couple of minutes, Ryback comes running out and tries to attempt at making a save, but then gets jumped and attacked himself for the end of the show. Guys, I can't stress you enough. Thanks for tuning in and watching this review. I'm sorry I was a little all over the place. I didn't take much notes, but I did the very best that I could. Like always, please check out the official website of the Effort Brand at FightNationWrestling.com. In all the channels that make up the Effort Brand of Wrestling and Entertainment here on YouTube.com, I'm JC Styles, and I'll catch you later.